All right, so you've heard the saying, the fortune is made in the follow-up. Well, if fortunes are made in the follow-up, then I'm here to tell you it's an absolute gold mine if you rethink your database. Your database is no longer just your CRM. It's everybody that knows you. It's all of your subscribers. It's your entire community. And that's what we're gonna talk to you about today is why you need to build a community funnel. Listen, if I could go back and whisper in my own ear, I would tell myself, you gotta nurture these individuals. You can't just do business with the people that are 3% of the market looking to do business today. What about the people that are a month from now, nine months from now, 19 months from now, three years from now. If you wanna have people reaching out to you, then you have to attract them and you're gonna do that. By learning a concept that we call the community funnel, it's in our book, Digital President. If you haven't had the opportunity, absolutely need to read it. It's the best advice I'd give to myself if I could go back in time. Hey everybody, it's Michael Reese here. I'm a digital marketing expert, a real estate coach, and an agent. And I teach real estate brokers, team leaders, and agents how they can grow their business by leveraging digital marketing, social media, and content so that they can attract business and build a business that works harder for them than they do for it and literally grow their business exponentially and if that's what you want to do if you want to get more listings if you want to grow your business if you want to build a team then make sure you go down and subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications because I put content out like this every single week and while you're down there make sure if you like stuff like this well if you like this video specifically hit that like button all right so let's talk about it today what we're gonna talk about is I'm gonna talk about the four elements that you need to put into your business if you're gonna leverage social media and you're gonna optimize everything you're doing. The number one marketer is the person that can afford to spend the most to acquire a customer. And what that means is if I generate 100 leads and I'm only taking advantage of an opportunity, let's say 2%, 3% of the leads, and I'm doing nothing with the other 97%, then I'm not maximizing the ROI I could get for that initial investment. And so what you want to do is you want to build your business, but you also want to build a brand. And how do you build a brand? How do you build a community? Well, the community funnel is designed exactly for that. So here's what we're going to talk today. We're going to talk today about one, building a brand, why most agents go out and chase business. And what I mean by that is knocking on doors, cold calling. They have to do that because they have no brand. Nobody's gonna reach out to them today and say, hey, Michael, uh, I wanna list my house with you. Well, that's what happened to me every day. My phone rang every single day. I was positioned as an authority in my marketplace and I attracted business, but that didn't happen overnight for the first couple of years until I actually went to another top producer's office and I asked him, I said, how many homes do you sell this month? Uh, how many we got on the board? 94, 94 deals under contract. It was April. It was April. And I said, you got to show me where did they come from? All of the people that he had on his board closing had went to his branded website. They had went and typed in his website. They had called his office. You know why? He had built a brand. I hadn't built a brand. So I shifted my business model and I started doing branding. And here's the problem with branding. It's like monkey bars. You have to let go of one strategy in order to move forward with another. And I was unbranded. I was out there prospecting, going after the cold list, the people that didn't know anything about me. And I was just out there grinding away, working hard. But I learned that I could start making impressions. Once I nailed my value proposition, I started putting that out everywhere and that people would get impressions of my face. And here's the thing, with branding, perception matches reality over time. So people would look at me and I was perceived to be an expert because, hey, I see him here, I see him here, he must be doing something right. But over time, over time, they might bump into somebody, see something that I have marketing-wise, maybe they see a wrapped vehicle, maybe they bump into me at an event. Over time, time over all of those impressions, which took years to build, I was able to build my name where people were actually doing business with me for who I was and not just what I do. Meaning they didn't call me because I had the key to unlock a door. They called me because I was perceived to be the person that was going to help to get their desired outcome. And so the good news that I have for you today is you can do that literally in a fraction of the time. And here's what I want to tell you. What I mean by that is if you build a brand, the next thing you're going to have to do is, let me tell you, I'm going to whisper it to you. Here, come, come, come here real quick. You have to build an audience. Here's what I mean by an audience. Listen, if I was gonna go out right now, I'd build a Facebook community, and what would I call it? I'd either go after my city, I would go after my neighborhoods, but I would build that, and what I want it to do is be a resource for where people can go to get answers to their questions. Remember, you gotta think like the consumer, and I just recently moved here to Dorado, Puerto Rico. It's a 2,500 acre massive resort. It's beautiful, but when I moved here, I joined the community. That was the first thing everybody told me to do. A guy comes by, every month to work on my golf cart to wash it. Got his name referred to me by someone in the community. There's a gentleman that comes here to cut my hair. Got his name referred to me by somebody in the community. When we first got here, there was a situation where we needed to get a tutor and a nanny. Got one in our neighborhood Facebook community. We went there for everything from looking to buy a car to finding people that could actually help us with cleaning our home, right? Finding someone who's going to come in and give us those professional services. And here's the thing. When 
you have a community, that's a place. If you have an audience and they're there and they're there because they want to be there, they decided that they wanted to opt in. They've given you permission. Now you are building your brand and what you're doing is as you build your brand, you're also building your influence. And the way you're doing that is you're adding value. Because when I go and I post a question because maybe I'm moving to your city and I have a question or maybe there's information that I didn't even know I should ask and you presented that to me and you solved the problem for me before it was even a problem. Doing that over time, those same impressions that you get with branding through direct mail or someone passing your billboard every single day down the highway, now you can get that inside a Facebook community. If they're inside of your community, now every time you post inside of that group, they can actually turn on notifications to be notified when new stuff comes up. And that might be important to them just for the simple reason, why did they join the community in the first place? And the goal here is you're trying to get them to know, like, and trust you. And to do that, you want to have consumption. So as people consume your content that you provide to them, whether that's content of telling them about what's going on in the marketplace, the top 10 places to eat if you're vegan, whether that's telling them about things to do this summer in your neighborhood or this summer in your city, well, by doing that, you're building a relationship, you're nurturing that relationship, you're building a friendship with them digitally. And if you haven't read the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, one of the best books in the world, people will literally do more for their friends than they will do for a stranger. Friendship supersedes everything in negotiation. I would sell my car cheaper to a friend than I would a stranger. And so what the community funnel allows you to do is it allows you to build MoFu, MoFu content, which is middle of funnel content, and BoFu content, which is bottom of funnel content. One is gonna allow you to demonstrate, where you can go out and demonstrate your expertise. You can walk around and video different builders, builder incentives, neighborhood community features, information that's gonna help a potential home buyer that's out of town that join your community because they're interested in moving into your city. You used to call them a lead, but now you're bringing them into the community. You're providing value to them. So when they do decide to move there, they think of you first. That's the goal. When you're building a brand, you want to do that in a non-salesy way. You want to do it for actually the reasons why they want to move there. So if someone has a reason why they want to move there, guess what? When you have a community funnel, you can ask them. You can literally ask them specific questions. What's their email address? What's most important to them? What is their timing? You can literally sift and sort all of your leads into a community funnel under value proposition that might be maybe you provide uh, properties that are coming soon. Maybe you post off market properties. Whatever the reasons are that they need to join your community, you nail that value proposition and you offer that to all of your unconverted leads. They go from strangers where you're a pest chasing them to welcome guests to your community. And here's the best part. Consumption is no longer linear. In the past, you would have to maybe see a postcard or you know before the internet, maybe you see a magazine ad or a newspaper ad and then you'd have to wait till the next issue comes out. Not in a community. I can scroll in your Facebook feed, which is it's an actual user experience that I'm familiar with because I use Facebook in my personal life. So when I join your community, the content is laid out the same. So I can watch one video, a second video. I can literally search videos. So it's a non-salesy way. If I'm searching on the community for a solution and I bump into one of your videos, I was looking for something. I found your video. It wasn't like you mailed it to me and it came in my mailbox and I'm sifting at my trash can trying to decide what I want to look at and what I don't. I was out there seeking something. So when I go on to my Facebook community here in Puerto Rico, Dorado, Puerto Rico, there's times that I'll look and I'll learn about an event coming, an Easter event or a graduation event, or maybe it's a golf cart for sale. And maybe I don't want to sell the golf cart, but maybe one of my friends in the community mentioned to me at the pool that they're looking for a golf cart. These are things that really happen. I literally met a lady at the pool looking for a house. I told her about a house that I had saw in the community that was posted and that individual ended up buying that house. That brings us to the most important thing, the offers. You can have a universal offer. Not only can you have an offer now for all of your leads that what are you going to do right now? You get a lead, you're going to call them, you're going to follow up with them with another call. How are you nurturing them now? Imagine if they were in a community and you could put offers into that community. Hey, anybody in here, a school teacher, firefighter, anybody interested on federal, state, or municipal grants, anybody looking to buy or learn about this? Maybe there's something that's in the political news about home ownership that you want to share about, you know, home sales prices or the housing bubble. All of that information is building you as an authority inside of the community. You're becoming the incredible Hulk in a puddle. And at the end of the day, it's going to allow you to double in more of your transaction. Because now when you get a listing, you can actually show your prospect what you do and how you market. And that's one way that you can call your buyer waiting program. I have tons of buyers from all over the country that are part of our community that are looking for homes. And we're able to provide your home to them in advance of putting your home on the MLS. Maybe it's 24 hours, 48 hours, whatever the laws or the rules are for your MLS. But here's the thing. Again,
again, remember, you're getting a situational opt-in. You're sifting and sorting your database. You're making offers. Not only the offer to join your community, which you can offer to the entire public, you're also making the offers inside of your community. Find out what your home is worth. You can post that. Do a survey. You can survey people in the community. You're literally able to do whatever it is that you want because you're perceived as the mayor, as the digital president, as the person, the go-to expert, the subject matter expert. So at the end of the day, whether it's doubling in your deals, whether it's increasing your conversion, or if it's simply giving you better nurture content, if you do not have the community funnel mindset, you're leaving money on the table. Everybody should have a community in which they're contributing value and that community should be built with all of the homeowners in their marketplace that reach out to them simply by making them an offer and giving them a reason why. Join this community so you can what? So you can finish that statement, end it with a great benefit, make that offer to people, and then once they're in there, add value, make deposits, and then you'll get withdrawals. And here's the thing. If you want to know what the best offers are that work inside of a community funnel, if you want to know the best offers that work for getting listing, then make sure you head on over to listingclass.com. If you haven't had a chance, there's a short little video that we shot there. That video is going to walk you through the best offers working right now. We update that video usually every 30 to 45 days. We're going to go over the metrics, the ad copy, the images, everything you need to know for what's working best, whether you're in Portland, Oregon, Orlando, or Nashville, Tennessee. We're going to show you what we've seen that works best so you don't have to guess when you can know. So if you like this type of stuff, then make sure you like this video. Hit that like button while you're down there. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't. If you've been watching these videos, I'd really appreciate it. And if you're going to subscribe, you might as well turn on notifications so you can know when we're going to put out new content. And here's the thing. You can build a business that works harder for you than you do for it, but you have to get into the attract not chase side of the business. The best type of business and the best type of life to have or the best type of life to live is a life by strategy. And here's how you get that. It's not by working in your business, it's by working on your business. So remember, work on your business and we'll see you at the top or from the top.